whiskey or whiskey but with an e what's the difference well grab a dram grab a seat and let's Welcome to First Fill, I'm Phil, and I'm going to fill you in about whiskey. Firstly, we're going to go back to actually what does whiskey even mean? And it goes back to Gaelic, to the word, in it, and I'm not even going to try and pronounce it properly, I'm just going to put it up. Uskaba. Now, uska means in Irish Gaelic, water, and bar means life. So, whiskey literally means water of life, which is kind of unspecific, you know? Like, I mean, it's great, it's it is the water of life. And that's why whiskey actually can cover several different types of drinks that even use different ingredients and different types of grain and all that sort of thing. So with the word whiskey, you can kind of separate it geographically. And if you were to be really simple, basically Ireland and the States spell it with the E. Jim Beam Kentucky Straight Bourbon Whiskey with the E. Whereas Scotch and generally the rest of the world will not have the E. So why did this happen? You know, why did we get two different spellings? Well, basically if you, when you go back to 1875, the Scotch whiskey industry just wasn't that good and it was kind of seen as low quality. So the Irish, and, and there's a lot of Irish immigrants to the States, wanted to kind of have a distinctive drink. So they added the E and that was the distinction between Irish whiskey and Scotch whiskey, which then the States used the same rule as the Irish when they started their own distilleries and started making their own whiskey. But the big difference between 1875 and today is, well, actually Scotch is now the leader in whiskey around the world. So all these other countries now that have started new distilleries and stuff like Australia, New Zealand, Japan, They've opted to go for the spelling of whiskey without the E. But there are some distilleries in the States, where most of them spell it with an E, that actually spell it without the E. And that goes back to some of the Scotch heritage of some of those individual distillers, like Maker's Mark. Even though Maker's Mark is like very American, you know, they wanted to pay homage to their heritage and it was Scottish heritage when Maker's Mark was set up. There was a tweet that came out where Maker's Mark said, so why do we spell whiskey without an E at Maker's Mark? The Samuels decided to pay homage to their Scottish Irish heritage. So it's not a rule across the board. Um, there's another whiskey called George Dickel, which also spells it the same as Maker's Mark, another American whiskey. But generally on the whole, you can know that when you see an E, it, can, it would either be American or Irish. An easy way to kind of remember this is if you think about the countries, the countries with E in the spelling, like Ireland and America, have E in whiskey, whereas Scotland, Japan, Canada don't have E's in their spelling, so also don't use the E. But there are exceptions to this, like New Zealand, which has an E in new, obviously, doesn't it? Even Aotearoa has an E in it, so, hmm. So while we're talking about the differences between whiskey and whiskey, um, let's go through some of the world whiskey. Let's go through, let's talk a little bit about each type of whiskey. So the first is Scotch whiskey. Now Scotch whiskey, spell it, as I've said, without the E. And there's a few things about Scotch that you should know, and you can see this in my What is a Single Malt video. In Scotland, they have lots of regulations that kind of help the whiskey there to maintain that high quality. And one is that, all whiskey there, for it to be called whiskey, has to be aged and used barrels for three years. And this is kind of how Scotch became known as like a premium brand, not just like this new make spirit to get drunk on. Because now they need barrels and it costs more and the prices go up, it's become a much more of a premium drink. Especially after the disease that wiped out all the vineyards in Europe, which means a lot of people couldn't drink their brandy or the cognac anymore, and a lot of people turned to whiskey back then. The other thing about Scotch is that to be called Scotch, it has to be matured and produced in Scotland and single malt, Scotch whiskey, like this one here, when it has the word malt, has to be from 100% barley. So the next one is Irish whiskey. 
So, Irish whiskey, and I guarantee you know what this is, Jameson. I mean, it's in every single bar in the world. And unfortunately, I did have some other Irish whiskies I drank, so they're gone. But Jameson, I've got some Jameson here for your education. As you can see, with Irish whiskey, it has a E. Focus. An E. So some of the things about Irish whiskey is generally it's going to be distilled three times. I talked about how in a previous episode for Whiskey for Beginners that Orkatoshan is also triple distilled, which is in Scotland. And a lot of people call Orkatoshan the Irish distillery of Scotland. It kind of is, and it's kind of similar in flavour and profile of these. And as you can see, it's massive writing triple distilled so this is a big part of irish whiskey this triple distillation and with irish whiskey as well it can contain malt but also can contain grain you know you won't see malt on the name because they will be a combination of grain and malt not always i know there are some single malts now in ireland but as a general rule that's kind of what you get and like scotch whiskey irish whiskey has to be barreled for three years for it to be cooled an Irish whiskey is set by the regulations and which is why Irish whiskey is great whiskey because this high standard has been set. It's not like gin or vodka, you know, it takes time. It has to be in this barrel for a certain amount of time before it could be sold onto the market and called Irish whiskey. And the next one is bourbon. Now bourbon is from the States and generally has an E, but this one, as I just said, doesn't have the E. And the thing about bourbon is it's always matured in fresh oak cask. So it's not like scotch where it's often aged in uh, barrels that have come from even different drinks like sherry and port. And then the other thing is it has to be 51% corn and then the rest can be barley or something. But, and bourbon is kind of famous in the American South and especially Kentucky. So both the Maker's Mark and the Jim Beam are from Kentucky, but in 1964 there was regulation passed that it actually can be made anywhere in America. But that's kind of where it started and that's kind of where it became famous. The other thing about bourbon is actually no regulation about how long it has to be in the casks for. You know, you can have bourbons that have only been aged for three months. The only exception to this is straight whiskey. So this one here is Maker's Mark Kentucky straight bourbon, um, that has to be aged for a minimum of two years. So more similar to the Irish and the Scotch kind of age. And US regulation kind of dictates that for it to be called bourbon, it has to be made in the States to be called bourbon. So you're not gonna find a bourbon in, in India or something. And then rye whiskey, I mean, I don't actually have a bottle of rye whiskey to show you, but it's kind of similar to bourbon, but instead of it being 51% corn, it's 51% rye for it to be called rye. There are exceptions to this, like in Canada, they don't have that rule. So, you know, the percentages might be a bit different. And then we've got Japanese whiskey. So this is Yoichi uh, that I got from Japan. As you can see, they don't have an E in the word whiskey. So very much like scotch and actually it's very much like scotch because in the 1920s, a lot of the, these distillers who were the first distillers in Japan actually trained from Scottish institutions. A lot of the process is very similar to the way scotch is made. The only difference is that there's no minimum aging requirement. So with scotch, nothing will be under three years. Japanese whiskey, you could potentially have whiskey that's under three years old, similar to bourbon, I mean, apart from straight bourbon. And the thing is about Japanese whiskey as well is that if it's a blended Japanese whiskey, often it can actually have scotch in it, like Ben Nivis, which its parent company can export off to Japan and then mix it with Japanese whiskey. And so there will be Japanese whiskey with scotch single malt inside it. So that's why you're gonna get a lot of similarities between the two countries. The other big whiskies that I don't currently have in my collection uh, Indian whiskey, that's a big upcoming one. Swedish whiskey, like the Mac Meyer, that's a good one. And Australian whiskey in Tasmania. There's a lot of distilleries happening that are in Tasmania at the moment. So it's very exciting what's happening. And then New Zealand whiskey. And I thought I'd just mention that, and there's nothing you can do about it because I think it's great. So this one is from Thompson Manuka Smoke. And this one's really interesting because it's used, it's been smoked with Manuka. So it's completely different from 
any of the other whiskies you can even buy on the market. It's got a really uniquely New Zealand um, smell and taste to it. And then another upcoming whisky is Cadrona, which is in the South Island, which have quite a similar climate to Scotland. Uh, it's quite cold, it's in the mountains, there's lots of fresh water, and that's another one to look out for. There's exciting things happening with all the whiskies, whether they've got E or whether they've got no E. There's heaps of distilleries happening around the world, and that's what makes me really excited. I mean, where's whiskey gonna be in 10 years? It's gonna be incredible. I think it's gonna be kind of like what wine is now. You know, wine is in so many places like South Africa and Australia and New Zealand and France and Spain and Italy and the States. I feel like whiskey's coming that way. But the thing is with whiskey, a lot of them have this regulation where they have to be aged a minimum of three years, so it takes time. Hopefully in 10 years, as long as this recession doesn't wipe out all the distilleries, it's gonna be fantastic. What a time to be a consumer of whiskey. So if you like this video, Make sure you give it a like. And um, these videos take quite a long time to make. I mean, there's a lot of kit. It's, it can be quite expensive too. So I appreciate you yeah, if you give a comment, you know, help people who are also getting into whiskey down in that comment section, you know, give your advice about, you know, what, what whiskey from your country should they drink? If I was to try Indian whiskey, what whiskey should I try? But above all, share, share your whiskey and enjoy. Beauty.